Orla, listen, thanks a million for joining us. Um, it's great to be able to chat to you. And obviously, your second year with Brisbane Lions and a great start to the season in round one, winning by 29 points. Um, you'll obviously be looking forward to round two, but how did it feel, I suppose, getting that start and getting that positive win at the beginning? Yeah, it was great. I think um, all the girls were saying, and um, that preseason went so fast and we were all really looking forward to the season start and especially with how it ended last year as well with COVID so there was a lot of um, excitement and because we were playing Richmond as well we've never played them before we didn't get a chance to last year and um, yeah it was just an amazing atmosphere and we did a kind of fly in fly out so we went down to Melbourne on Sunday morning played the game and then came back home which is something we never really do so we usually go the night before so yeah it was definitely great um to get the win and to get such um a big win as well was was super and I think it's really bringing us good into round two. And Orly we're speaking about pre-season there but you've been back out in, in Australia since uh, the 5th of November <laughs> so you've definitely I suppose you found you've settled in but how was it, I suppose, leaving at that time, obviously with Camogie and football and being a, a triple star now with your dual county status and obviously in Australia, was it tough leaving at that stage in November? Yeah, definitely. And I think why most um, Gaelic footballers um, choose to come here is because of the lifestyle. We get to still play championship back home in Ireland, but then we get to play the league here as well. So it comp they complement each other very well. So... Yeah, for me, it was a very tough decision. It was kind of bittersweet. Um, um, my own county, Tipperary, were still involved with Camogie. We were in quarterfinal, semifinal. And then with the football, we still had our second round against Monaghan. Um, so it was kind of hard um, deciding to leave then. Um, but I knew it was going to be the best decision for me. I've already deferred my college in UL and I'd already... Um, giving up my job and getting ready to come out and essentially this is this was my job now so I wanted to give it the best um, I could and I knew I had to do two weeks quarantine as well so um, I didn't want to be too far behind. And I suppose Orla that's a big part as well of you're saying it's your job but that, what was the difference I suppose in the professionalism when you came out there last year how did you find settling in or, or how did they help you I suppose to settle into the game? Yeah, I was very lucky here. Um, Brisbane Lions have been nothing but welcoming, um, even all the girls. Um, you think that maybe you're coming over, you might be taking someone's position or maybe throwing the rocks in it a bit, but they're all so welcoming and they're really interested to get to know you and your lifestyle back home as well. And the coaches have um, helped me so much as well and all the background staff um, too. There's so much involved behind the scenes, especially because it is in that professional environment with doctors, physios, trend conditioning coaches, nutritionists. There's so much in the background and they've all been so um, supportive. I suppose this year has been a bit easier um, just because I've had that year experience. I know the team, I know the area better as well. So um, I'm definitely enjoying it a lot more and feel more confident in myself um, as an AFLW player as well. Orla, one thing that has been mentioned as well, I suppose, is the physicality. And I think everybody saw that last week in round one. How did you find coming to terms with that? Because I know I'm not saying that in Tipperary you take it easy, but <laughs> it's definitely it's a huge step up in terms of the, the physicality of the game and the, the tough hits that are going in. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's one thing um, I was aware of coming over. I know there is similar skills, but essentially there's a more contact game and a lot more um, pushes and a lot more shoves as well. So, yeah, I think getting used to that, learning how to tackle properly, but also... So, being aware that you can be tackled from any direction as well was definitely hard um, to get used to. So even here, you see a lot of the girls, um, are, there's a lot bigger and stronger girls here. And I think just, that's just from getting used to the physicality of the game. So that's still something I learned. And, and I think just being aware of your surroundings that you could get tackled at any time, um, any direction as well. So I enjoy it though, too. I think that um, it's good to have that bit more physicality which we're not used to back home but um yeah it's definitely something um I, I got a wake up call to when I came here. And speaking of home they say it's a long way to Tipperary but actually I was reading up about you there you've been born in Sydney so very interesting to see that you have Amer you have an Australian citizen as well and we people I suppose in Ireland would say it's a great advantage but do you feel like you've gone home or <laughs> how has it felt to go <laughs> back to, to Australia again? Um, yeah, definitely. Even when I was younger, everyone used to say that would, that would stand to you now when you're older, but I, I never realised why. But um, yeah, having that Australian citizenship makes it so much easier here with setting everything up, like bank accounts or even anything. 
Medicare, all that kind of stuff makes it a lot more easier and with the visas, not having to sort that out. But um, yeah, no, definitely um, Tipperary is my home. And I, I, I love being here for a couple of months, but I, I really, really appreciate getting to go home and still getting to play at my county and seeing all my family and friends again. Um, yeah, I'm so privileged even to be here now because with COVID and stuff, seeing the two different sides of the world, it's crazy um, how different they are. So yeah, definitely very grateful to get the chance to be here again. And Orla, with the elements of the game, what would you have found was very different in terms of the rules and learning maybe the different techniques? Because I know it's a very technical game in, in a lot of ways, but what would have stood out to you, I suppose? Um, well, I suppose the one thing I knew before I came over here, the only, the only thing I knew was that the ball was different shaped. It was an oval shape and not a circle shape. So I knew that when I bounced it, it wouldn't come back up to me. So yeah, before I came out here, I, I didn't have any real experience with it. So I just getting used to the skills. So there is some similar skills with like um, marking, but also the overlap run and running off the shoulder um, and the long kick in. It's similar to Gaelic, but it's still different ways of doing that. So even the way you have to handball it, the ball always has to be coming back to you. And the way you kick it, you have to watch your ball drop, where your hands positions are, um, the way you're angled to. Um, just, just, yeah, so much elements to the game. And Besides just the game itself, the whole um, tactics around it and the whole um, being able to read the game and they obviously have interchange here, so they don't have substitutes. They have um, you kind of rotate in and out. So you could start for the first three minutes, be off for three minutes, be back in. And I found that very hard to get used to. And I'm still learning now. Um, I find it hard that when you come off the bench, you still have to be ready to go again in three minutes. And it's not really a break. It's just kind of get a drink of water, watch what's happening and then go in again. So you kind of have to give it all when you're on the oval basically and be ready then for your rotation and just that timing of that and knowing where to position yourself. Um, I still struggle with this year, but I'm, I'm definitely learning as I go on. And in terms of positioning then, Orla, like, would you say that everybody gets their own position or are you kind of, should you be able to play in a couple of different roles? Are you trained how to play in a few different areas on the pitch? Yeah, so um, a lot of girls are more, um, can play in a couple of positions and their rotations might even be from the backs to the mids, um, off to the bench, where some people might just be um, forwards, bench, forward or something like that. But um, yeah, last year I played a lot of kind of high half forward, which is similar to a wing forward role back home, which I'd be used to. But this year um, I'm doing a bit more of the wing. So it's kind of like in the midfield, but I'm at the wing as well. So a lot more running involved. So it's kind of up and down the field, like a midfielder would be in Gaelic football. So I think I'm, I'm suited to that role and I like that role, but um, yeah, it's different because when I first got here, I just ran everywhere. Whereas you have to kind of keep your position. So if you're on one wing, you're not meant to go to the other wing. Like you don't cross over much. Um, you kind of just, you do kind of just monitor your area and just keep everything um, kind of clean and just make sure that your opponent isn't getting the ball, but you're still also following the game plan. And he obviously reached the final stages last year with COVID. It was disappointing that it couldn't happen. But have you seen a big difference in how comfortable you feel, I suppose, with the players and just the general routine of what you have to do over there now? Yeah, definitely. Um, I felt last year it was a lot of like trial and error. So when I made a mistake, um, I kind of just learned as I went on. I think last year I gave away maybe three or four 50 metre penalties, which is where I ran through the mark and then they got 50 metre advantage. So that was obviously something um, I got thrown in deep end with. But um, yeah, no, definitely uh, it's a lot of learning. And I think last year, the way the season ended was so abruptly, we played Carlton and Melbourne Sunday afternoon. And that Sunday evening, um, we got the email saying it was all called off. So I think going into that game, we were all still a bit hesitant about what, um, what way the season was going to look. And we probably didn't play our best. So we thought this year that we have um, we recruited very well. And we kept most of the girls and we just got a few extra ones as well. So we're very strong this year and it's a real close bunch as well. And I think, um, yeah, definitely the final stages are on the cards for us if we just keep performing and um, keep getting over each week. Well, it's been really positive with a 29-point win in the first round, but you just mentioned recruitment there. And I know cross-coders was how you kind of got into it, but how did that come about, or How did you start off on that process? Yeah, so essentially... Um, I was just seeing the likes of the girls who went out before me. So, of course, Dawn was the first one. And then Sarah Rowe, Eilish Consonine, and Ashley McCarty, who's actually from the, we play on the same county team. So, 
seeing how well they got on out there and I there wasn't really much exposure to the AFLW in Ireland so you kind of watch maybe highlights on Twitter or see results and I think I was kind of watching it from afar like looking in seeing how the game was played looking at how the Irish girls especially were getting on and I kind of just decided that it's kind of every athlete's dream to get the chance to play um, sport professionally so I kind of just applied for cross coders two years ago and see what would happen so I kind of just sent in clips of me playing camogie and Gaelic football and lucky enough um, a few clubs were interested and got in touch um, with cross coders Jason who who's been doing great and um, I just decided then that Brisbane Lions seemed like the right one for me and the way they just spoke about they kind of wanted to still keep my Gaelic style but they thought that there was definitely um, a spot for me in the team so I kind of pick them then in the end and I'm delighted with my decision but um, yeah cross quarters have been great and even seeing how much Irish girls are here now um, it's growing and growing and it's fantastic to see and although we might be playing against each other you still always root for the Irish girls and seeing um, hope that they do well with their teams. <laughs> and Orla do you find that there's any way that you can kind of read into their play a bit because they're footballers as well you know if you're playing against them would you kind of think maybe I know what they're going to do or you can can you tell a bit more about them as Irish footballers rather than the Australian footballers? <laughs> um, I suppose there is some similar things. Um, a lot of the girls, like myself included, I still at times would go towards the Gaelic kind of six um, kick, so a kind of hook kick around the body instead of the straight kind of punt kick. So I think a few girls have done that. And I think Irish girls are notorious for playing on. We don't really mark the ball. We like to always play on. So I kind of gives that unpredictive edge in the game, which I think a lot of teams um, are kind of realising now that Irish girls do play on a bit. And they say that we run a lot as well. So because we run so much playing Gaelic football and Kogi, we're up and down the field all the time. And AFLW is more of a stop start game. We've more kind of um, inclined just to run all the time. So I think that's something I noticed as well, playing against the Irish girls, they're just everywhere. <laughs> And Orla, a big thing, I suppose, is just the, the difference in professionalism with it. But could you take us through maybe sort of a, a training schedule that you would have even the week leading up to Gold Coast Suns now? What has it been like for training? Um, yeah, so I think when you're in, because the season is so short, we only have, um, we play a week every weekend um, for 10, 11 weeks. Um, the big focus during season is just recovery and I suppose reviewing last week's game, but also focusing on next week's game. So we played on Sunday and then we had Monday off and then Tuesday um, this week we had a review and then a kind of light training. So mostly just skills based and maybe just um, clocking up a few Ks just to flush out the legs. And then Wednesday we had gym session, Thursday we had a training session again and it'd be more focused towards the Suns and the way they play. And Friday we had gym again and then Saturday today we have a captain's run, which is just like, um, just like a meeting and just kind of another kind of kick around, get um, the ball moving again. And then, yeah, Sunday we have our game. So during season, it's probably two to two um, gym sessions a week and maybe three pitch sessions. And I suppose just getting your own recovery in a lot of the girls, we go to recovery um, centers and do our own recovery and really focus on making sure that we're getting enough to eat, to sleep and um, our hydration is on point. Um, I think this weekend it's going to be 34 degrees playing our game. So, yeah, hydration will be needed today. <laughs> oh, definitely. A bit of SPF. Um, and Orla, yeah. you, when you're talking about um, the difference, I suppose, in last year, you reached the final stages, but with COVID, it changed things. What have you noticed that's different? And I suppose even traveling to the games or the training schedule, has it been a dramatic change from last year? Um, it hasn't been too dramatic. I think. At the start, during pre-season, we were in groups of 10. So at times we could only train in groups of 10. So we kind of kept the forwards together, the mids and the backs. And even getting ready and going to the ice baths and getting changed, we had to stay in different areas. Um, but then it was still, that was maybe once or twice a week, but then we still got to train together um, as well during the week. And then I think one, when the case happened here in Queensland a couple of weeks ago, we went into... Um, uh, three day lockdown which is too bad so we had no training during that time and everyone could just do their hour of exercise so we had in the, we had running plans to do ourselves and we had to wear masks and stuff outside but since then um we all we had to wear masks as well going down to melbourne just in airports you have to wear them too but 
since then we're back to normal basically um which is great to see and there's no real um there's no real restrictions with covid wise but i think it's once you fly to games and go through airport systems that masks are mandatory um but yeah we're lucky other than that that's very good and I suppose taking the gold Suns at the when you're talking about playing the Suns, it's a, a big a big match obviously for Brisbane Lions again after the big win. But what I suppose are you looking forward to for round two, or what are you hoping to to be able to show against the Suns? Yeah, definitely. I think it's going to be our first home game, so um, that's obviously huge. Our last home game was against Collingwood last year with no crowd, so it was behind closed doors. So I think the game this weekend sold out in a couple of hours. So it's going to be great to have that real atmosphere and for the fa- for the fans to be able to come to a home game and be at AFLW match again. So that's going to be great excitement. And obviously the Suns um, are in Queensland as well. So it's kind of like um, a Queensland clash between the two. So there's great rivalry there. So that'll be good. And a lot of the girls used to play with um, Brisbane Lions before the Suns started. So then there's great friendships there. And I think that will come out on the day as well. But um, yeah, for me, I'm just excited to get to play around too. Um, it's, um, I think, just bring my strength more to the game and get involved more. I think last week I was a bit nervous, a bit jittery on the ball, especially playing a new position I've never played before. So just getting used to that and kind of just playing my own game um, and hopefully get a win at the end of it. Um, that's the main priority too. And with obviously with a new position, there's a lot to learn, but what I think, what would it change that it's going to be over 30 degrees with the heat? Does that change in any way the, the play and the system of play that you'll have there with Brisbane? Um, I don't think it'll change much of um, on, the, on the day, but I think it'll just be today to make sure we're all getting hydration, um, to make sure we're eating enough. And then on the day, just make sure that we're doing our rotations right. So at times it's hard to come off because the ball might be stuck on one end and people might be getting their break. So I think it's really important just to to really make sure that rotations are on point and people are getting their enough time off and then can go back out again. But um, yeah, we were actually meant to play in Geelong and we were we were happy that a Melbourne team was coming up um because the heat they wouldn't be used to that. But because we're playing Gold Coast now, they're they're just as well as used to that heat, so <laughs> won't be much of an advantage. No rookies there. Um, no, no. Well, another thing that you know people would be interested to hear about as well. Do you see that there's a big change in the recruitment that maybe there are so many different players every year or do you find that this year you're still kind of seeing the same players crop up on the teams? Um, yeah, I definitely think there's um, like the recruitment's gone a bit, that has gone a lot bigger and with the likes of um, players, there's so much versatile and different types of players on teams. So they have to have tall players and then they have to have small ones too and then medium ones. And I think um, a lot of girls are the girls who are naturally kind of athletic and kind of I like a running game are the girls that I see are getting more recruited. Um, AFLW is still a new game and it's changing every year and I think it's becoming to, it's becoming a more fast paced um, kind of Gaelic like game I find well at times so I think yeah just those kind of fast girls um, but also I have to have that strength for the contact too so I think it's just a bit of every everything really there's people of all body shapes and sizes on teams and I think everyone has different jobs and different positions and roles to play. And Orla with the contact have you found that you've um, suffered any serious injuries or um, any tough injuries from last year because obviously this season has only begun but last year was there anything that uh, with the tough contact and physicality that affected you? Um, I was actually lucky enough I didn't get much injuries I don't know if that's because I didn't get as involved as I should have but um yeah, no, with um as I was saying here though, that we've so much um background staff with physios and we do so much prehab stability um because ACLs are obviously prone here um with a lot of the athletes. So they really focus on that and I think that's great to see. And before every training session, we'd be there an hour, an hour and a half early, just working on stability, making sure we're getting all our stretches in, warming up properly. Um, which is great to see and I think trying to bring that back home as well so um, to bring into teams as well to prevent injury is obviously huge too but um, yeah the staff here have been great and they monitor it all um, so well now Um, even after games we do lots of um, tests and monitoring to see how fatigued we are to make sure that we're able to still do the gym in the week and still been able to train throughout the week so yeah they're they're geniuses here I don't know how to do it all but it's definitely um, reassuring for us as players.
and I know everyone in Tipperary and definitely in Ireland be interested to, to see what's going to happen at the weekend. But any message for them at home, uh, Orla, or anything you'd like to say to them for they're watching in? <laughs> uh, I just, yeah, just enjoy it. I know it's probably hard to get used to the game I'm, from watching it. I, from talking to a few, they were they didn't know what was happening. But um, yeah, I suppose it's great to even get the coverage back home. It's it's super. And all my family and friends are saying how, how good it is. And to get that exposure is great. Um, so thanks for all the support and keep watching, I suppose. <laughs> well, Orla, we wish you the best of luck in round two and hope you do it against the Suns in the sun. Um, thanks for talking to us and good luck with the rest of the season. Thanks so much for having me. It's great. <laughs>